Hi, my name is Alyssa, and for my project, which is making healthy school lunches for students, here is my presentation on chemical connections. So the first topic is preservatives. So preservatives itself um, contain chemical compounds and ionic versus covalent bonds. So about the topic, chemical compounds are any substance which has two or more of the same molecules, each consisting of an atom that contains two or more elements. This then creates a chemical bond between the two molecules. So some examples of this, sugar. Sugar has a formula of C, one, two, hydrogen, two, two, oxygen, one, one. Salt has NaCl, and then baking soda has NaHCO3. So all three of these contain multiple different, different elements in them. So then bonds, ionic bonds are formed when a metal mixes with a non-metal, and then covalent bonds are formed when two non-metals react with each other. So here is specially related to my topic. How do these things come in handy um, for making school lunches? So food preservatives are obviously very bad. You should not be eating them on a regular basis as they can cause harm to your body. But food preservatives do contain compounds such as benzoic acid, sodium benzoate, nitrites, sulfites, sodium sorbate, sorbate, and potassium sorbate. So some examples of, and these are all chemical compounds. So some examples are benzoic acid, which has um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and its formula is C7H6O2. And then sodium benzoate is a sodium salt and is found in benzoic acid. It contains carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. Its formula is c 7 h 5 NaO2. Nitrite has a chemical formula of N0, or sorry, NO2 and then minus, and contains nitrogen and oxygen, making it a chemical compound. So ionic versus covalent bonds. So in that we're um, specific to the issue. So sodium benzoate has a mostly covalent bond since there is carbon, but it also sort of has an ionic bond because there is metal sodium in it. It just is not as strong as the carbon. And then sodium nitrite has a covalent bond because it has a nitride in it and then the bond between um, the nitrogen and oxygen within this is covalent, making it a covalent bond. So the next topic would be vitamin deficiencies. So uh, vitamin deficiencies and the reaction rate specifically. So about the topic, reaction rates are defined as how fast a chemical reaction will happen. It shows the relationship between the reactant and the product. So in a chemical formula, the reactant is always on the left side of the arrow. So, and then the product is always on the right side. So the products are always made of the same atoms in the reactants, they are just rearranged. So as a reaction goes on, the amount of react reactants that there are will decrease and the number of products will increase, which basically shows that the reaction is happening. And then concentration. So increasing the concentration of elements, a substance, anything can cause particles to collide more. Causing particles to collide more can speed up the, re the rate of a reaction. The same sort of thing can happen with temperatures. So increasing the temperature of anything will increase the energy. Increasing the energy of a particle will then make the particles move faster. Due to this, they will have more energy and they will move faster and collide more, also increasing the rate of a reaction. So related to the project, how does this relate to creating school lunches? So vitamins are a very important part of your body. You need vitamins to survive and school lunches often do lack. But vitamins are often able to increase the reaction rate of something. So vitamins are considered to be uh, coenzymes and basically work to create, um, to make a certain enzyme increase its rate of reaction. So some examples of this, vitamin B. Vitamin B, for example, works to create new enzymes, which then work to transfer energy to the human body. Vitamin D works to increase calcium absorption, phosphate, and magnesium. Vitamin B6 will work to regulate amino acids and produce neurotransmitters. The effect of temperature. Every vitamin reacts differently when exposed to temperatures different from what they are used to. Not all vitamins will um, theoretically speed up the re uh, their rate of reaction just because they are exposed to a higher temperature. For example, um, 
vitamin C, when it is exposed to heat, it will not increase its reaction rate. It will simply destroy itself and um, do cell um, collision, basically. Well, vitamin D shows no changes whatsoever. It will not increase the reaction speed. It will not decrease it. It won't change colors or anything. Nothing will happen to vitamin D. So yeah, that is it for vitamins. Next, macromolecules. So the food that you eat every single day is full of um, molecules and they are very important. They each do different functions that help you survive and grow. So about the topic as a whole, organic, and then this is obviously related to organic compounds and um, bonds. So organic compounds are any compound where a carbon is attached to another element. These are most commonly hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen, but they can be other things, as you'll see with some of these macromolecules. All organic compounds contain covalent bonds because carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are all nonmetals, and like I said earlier, this would make it a covalent bond. So this basically means that these uh, compounds will share electrons. How bonds work. Bonds are formed when multiple different atoms share valence electrons. Valence electrons are on the outermost ring of an atom. So an example of this is sodium chloride. A caution, cation, sorry, and an anion are combined to form this. Chloride takes a valence electron from sodium, which they do end up sharing. So basically, it will like almost hop electron rings, but they will still share at the end. And then both sodium and chloride are then joined together in an ionic bond to create sodium chloride. How does this specifically relate to the pro uh, to my project as a whole? So all sorts of organic compounds each will serve a purpose to the body. Um, if you don't have one, it can cause you to be sick. It can cause many issues overall. So there are four organic compounds. There are lipids, nucleic acids, proteins, and carbohydrates. So all four of these macromolecules are considered to be organic compounds. We need each of these in our daily lives and they serve different purposes, like I said. So carbohydrates, they serve as energy for the body and contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It is an organic compound because hydrogen is connected to another element, this being hydrogen and oxygen. Lipids store energy and provide insulation. It contains carbon and hydrogen. So in this case, carbon and hydrogen are connecting. Nucleic acids store and transmit genetic information to the body and they contain hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen. So in this case, the carbon will be connecting to hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And like I said earlier, this is the exception where phosphorus is involved, which is not very common, but it can happen. And then proteins will work to transmit molecules around the body and they contain nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And in this case, carbon is connecting to nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. So how do bonds work between these macromolecules? So lipids will have a carbon-hydrogen bond. Nucleic acids will have a hydrogen bond. Carbohydrates will have both carbon-carbon and carbohydrate bonds. And proteins will have a carbon-hydrogen bond. So overall, um, in this project, there are many different types of chemistry used, and this, of course, is only a few types. So thank you for listening.